Later today, the majority leader will use the so-called nuclear option to once again break the Senate rules. And this is going to be the latest episode in a series of decisions that have been made around here, mostly by the majority leader, but not only by the majority leader, to degrade the Senate's responsibility to advise and consent. It is a travesty what's happened here. Since January 2017, the majority leader wrote, for the first time in memory, a minority has exploited procedure to systematically obstruct a president from staffing up his administration. He seems to have completely forgotten the Obama administration when he was the leader of the minority, when he was systematically denying President Obama the right not only to put people in his cabinet and in his administration, but to put judges on the bench as well. Before President Obama arrived in Washington, the filibuster had been used 68 times on this floor. 68 times since that rule was created, sometime right before 1920. In the first five years of the Obama administration, the Republicans filibustered his nominees or used the filibuster in some other way 79 times. 68 times from the, when the rule was created to when President Obama became president, and then over the first five years of his administration, they used it 79 times. And they can't remember a time when a minority has systematically denied a president the ability to put judges on the court. It has been a concerted strategy of, of, of Senator McConnell for a decade, for more than that, and he succeeded. He led the most famous blockade that's ever happened in the Senate, and that was the blockade he led of Merrick Garland. When Justice Scalia died 342 days before the end of President Obama's term, Senator McConnell responded to that by saying, this vacancy should not be filled until we have a new president. He called President Obama a lame duck president. There was 342 days left in his term. He had an entire year left in his term. And until that point, the Senate had never refused to consider an elected president's nominee because the vacancy arose in an election year. And I think when the history is written about this period of our political system, this is all going to look like a tragic farce, all of it. And people are going to know when they write an op-ed piece on April Fool's and say one thing and they've spent the last 20 years doing something else. That's not going to be lost to the pages of history. That was Democratic Senator Michael Bennett from Colorado at his wit's end over Mitch McConnell's decision to trigger the nuclear option to confirm Trump's nominees at an even faster clip. The move by McConnell reduces debate time on most presidential nominees from 30 hours down to just two hours. In deciding to do so, McConnell criticized Democrats' systematic obstruction of judicial nominees as justification to use the nuclear option, which will allow Republicans to confirm scores more judges in the final year or so of Trump's first term. Except somehow, amid Democrats' quote unquote systematic obstruction, Republicans have already managed to confirm 37 appellate court judges in just over two years, including judges who are rated not qualified from the American Bar Association, as long as their partisan ideology is aligned with conservatives. For comparison, Obama got 55 appellate court judges confirmed during his entire eight year term. In fact, in the final two years of his presidency, the Senate under McConnell's leadership had confirmed only six Obama nominees, the slowest confirmation rate since 1953. And Senate Republicans during the Obama era abused these same rules that McConnell is now eliminating, using them to delay votes for Obama's nominees for sometimes as long as 138 days, only to then receive unanimous confirmation votes. In other words, these picks were clearly qualified and had bipartisan support, but Senate Republicans were nonetheless intent on delaying them as long as possible. I mean, Republicans were so glaringly hellbent on leaving vacancies in the courts that they even blocked their own nominees. But I'd say that the most curious part of McConnell's criticizing Democrats supposed systematic obstruction is, I feel like he was the architect of something pretty significant. One of my proudest moments is when I looked at Barack Obama in the eye and I said, Mr. President, you will not fill this Supreme Court vacancy. 
Ah, oh, that's right, there was that one time that he wouldn't even give Obama's Supreme Court nominee a hearing or a vote, despite the fact that it was his constitutional duty to do so, that Obama had nearly a year left in his term, and that no president has ever been denied his constitutional right for his nominee to be considered before. And this has always been Mitch McConnell's MO, a hypocrisy so insidious and obvious that to even call it out seems pointless. And what's worse, he does it under the guise of protecting our democracy, when his tenure as the Republican leader in the Senate has done more damage to our institutions than any administration could imagine doing, although this one is certainly trying. But most importantly, McConnell's actions today should serve as an ever-present reminder that no matter how sanctimoniously they grandstand, how much they bloviate about defending our freedoms or capitalism or the Constitution, they will undercut all of those things the very first opportunity they get, and they will do it every single time.